everybody. Uh, it's good to see you. My name's Phil, the storyteller. And I'm Will, the music teacher. Look, uh, we want to do a story for you today. Um, and the, the story is about a girl. And she's isolated. Like you. You're in isolation. And this girl was isolated. Look, uh, I'll tell you, Will, I'll tell you what's happened so far. Okay. All right? So far. The girl is called Crow Who Walks Backwards, and she is from the Lakota people, who are part of the Sioux Nation of North America. And she is living in a stone house. Mum and Dad have gone away to hunt the great white buffalo and have left her on her own in a snowy, snowy landscape, and she feels alone. Um, have you got any music that could give us the sense of feeling kind of alone, isolated? And in the cold, they said as well. Yes, the snow falling. <laughs> sort of a theme for her, isn't it? Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. Because it sums up her situation mm -hmm. a lot. The snow falling down. So there she is. And she has a cat. Now, when she's finished tidying up the house for her mum, there's a knock on the door. And it's the bear. And the cat says, don't open the door. But the bear says, I've got presents for you. Now, um... Actually, just like that music, this girl has never had presents before in her life. Not for Christmas, not for birthdays, not for Eid, never a present. And she really wants the presents, so she gets the bear to leave the presents on the doorstep. And when he's gone, she takes the presents. Um, but the next bit of the story is full of tension. Tension like a pulled elastic band can you do anything for me about tension well when you said tension that was making me think something that composers do and musicians do sometimes to create that tension that you're talking about is just to make the pitch of the music slowly get higher so i could play a note like this <laughs> something I can do to add to the tension instead of just playing with my bow going backwards and forwards like this I can play using my bow moving like this quickly backwards and forwards it, it, it makes a different sound <laughs> So, the next day, Crow, who walked backwards, was all alone in the house. It was snowing outside. But all last night, all she could dream about was the bear. Because she loved her presence and she wanted more. Now, while she was sweeping up in the house, she was making the house nice and clean. The cat, who was her friend, came up to her and began to slink past her and did that thing that cats normally do and went through her legs. But she didn't stroke the cat. She bent down and she kicked the cat. <laughs> And she turned to the cat and she said, You don't give me presents. The bear gives me presents. Well, she'd finished sweeping. She decided to cook the stew. She cut 
cut up the meat, the rich dark meat. It was called venison. What animal does venison come from? She put it in the stew, and the stew began to bubble and boil. And the cat came in, and the cat was so hungry, and the cat said, <coughs> Well, she took a piece of meat, and she dropped it in the stew, and she kicked the cat. And she said, You don't give me presents. The bear gives me presents. Well, the stew was bubbling and filled the house with the smell of love and home and family. And Crow got her little bowl of chocolate and her two hobnob biscuits. She sat by the fire and she stared into the fire, into the cracking, spitting fire and she could see the pictures. And that cat came up, and the cat wanted to be loved. And the cat crawled on her lap, and she put down her drinking chocolate, and she put down her hobnob biscuits, and she grabbed the cat by the scruff of the neck, and she threw the cat against the wall, and she said, you don't give me presents. The bear gives me presents. <laughs> there was someone at the door, and her heart beat with excitement. It could be the bear. It could be the bear. She went to the door. The cat said, please don't open the door. Crow, don't open the door. But she didn't listen. She clicked the first lock, clicked the second lock. Click the third lock, open the door. And there was the bear. She looked up into the bear's eyes. Would you like to come in, bear? The bear nodded. The bear leant down bowed its head under the lintel of the door, came up, and the whole house was filled with the smell of bear, which is the smell of wet fur, the smell of wet leaves and broken twigs. Please, bear, come over. You can sit in my dad's chair if you want. The bear sat in the daddy's chair. And Crow said, Bear, bear, where's my presents? And the bear said, In my mouth, crow. But how am I going to get the presents? Put your hand in my mouth. And she got her hand. And the bear opened his mouth and she put her hand in the bear's wet, hot, stinking mouth that smelt like a burning house and she reached in so far. The bear's wet nose touched her on the neck and she said, I can't find any presents, bear. And the bear said, Put your other hand in my mouth, crow. And so she got her other hand. And she put her other hand in the bear's mouth. And the bear looked at her with his cold, small, black, dead eyes. And she said, Bear, I can't find any presents. And the bear said, Put your head in my mouth. And she bent her head. And she put her head in the bear's mouth. And it was dark and wet and hot. And the bear's tongue scraped her cheek. And the bear's teeth cut her neck. And she said, I can't find any presents. And the bear opened his jaws. He was going to cut the girl in half when suddenly the cat came. And the cat looked at the bear, and the cat went, Ching! Ching! Roar! And jumped on the bear's back and scratched the bear. Scratched and scratched and scratched and scratched and scratched. And, scratched and, scratched. and the bear roared, Roar! The bear 
bear, turn up the bear, run to the door. The bear banged his head on the lid. <laughs> and the bear ran out and into the wood. Crow looked around her house, and the house began to fill up again with the smell of stew, which is the smell of home and family. And she picked up her cat, and she stroked her cat, and she said, I don't want presents anymore. I've got the best present in the world. I've got a good friend. And the cat said, the end of that story. Well, um, friends, what I would like you to think about is the nature of what is valuable. What do you need and what do you want? Well, you might want presents, but you need a friend. Can you think of three other things where you might want something but actually need something else. Will, mm. have you got anything for him to do? Well, I was thinking about the tension in that story and making those tense sounds on the cello here. But I was thinking about all the films that we watch and sometimes the games that we play on the computer they often have music that adds to the atmosphere, perhaps adds to the tension that's in those stories. The next time you watch something on television, listen to the music. How do the composers of that music make the atmosphere more tense, more scary for the viewers who are watching like you? Have a listen next time you're watching something. Well, it's goodbye from me, Phil the Storyteller, till next time. And it's goodbye from me, Will at Rill. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. <laughs>